welcome hello students welcome to my new video on this institute analysis now this video in this video we are talking about the new type that is the type fourth when the new constraint is added into the given lpp then what is the impact of their optimal solutions so myself harishka so far we have discussed the first three types of their lpp code. what is the impact on the optimal solution when we add a new constraint into the given LPP. Okay, so what is the meaning of it? Firstly, please. So look at this uh, very simple example. So there is a maximization of Z is nothing but the 5x1 plus 3x2 and so on. And you can easily solve this LPP either by the graphical method, again by analytical method, simplex method, or even the dual simplex method also. Okay, and then you can easily find this optimal solution. Okay. So I think all of you can up to here all of you can easily solve it. Now uh, the task of this video is to discuss the impact of the optimal solution by adding a new constraint that is one at a time. Not all the constraints you can add all the constraints but I just discuss about one by one one at a time. So what will happen if I just add the first constraints to this given LPP it means the new constraints are this is my first constraint okay this is my second constraint now if i just consider first part and now, now this is my third constraint okay and x i is are greater than zero and my objective function is maximization of z is 5x1 plus 3x2 now can the optimal solution of this new lpp is still x1 is 20 by 19 x2 is 45 by 19 and z is remain same is it so okay so if it is not then what will be the new optimal solution that's the first question okay second is under what conditions this optimal solution of the lpp will remain the optimal solution of this new formulated lpp okay so that's the basic task of this video and this lecture is there so uh, I just continue this example, discuss the impact of the optimal solutions by adding the new constraints one at a time. So that is what will happen when you add these constraints to the given LPP, then the optimal solution remains same or change. What will happen when you add this and third when you add this one. Okay. So uh, 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 look at that, you can easily solve with the help of the graphical methods and you will get easily the optimal solution after the two steps. So now, so the optimal solution of the LPP becomes this one, B. okay, from this previous case, we see that. So I just consider the three cases, one, two, and three, or you can also consider the fourth case or so, say any one of them, say uh, 2x1 plus x2 is greater than or equal to four and so on, arbitrary, you can take it any one. So first one, I just consider one by one. B. So consider the effect of the optimal solution, B, adding a constant to the optimal solution. So when you consider this constraints, so substitute the value of the optimal solution. Remember always the optimal solution. So consider substitute the value of this x1 and this x2 in this constraints and check whether this satisfied or not. Okay. So what is that? Look at that. This is 40 by 19 minus 45 by 19 is less than equal to 4. That's true. Okay. Because this is minus 9 by 14 and this is true. Okay, so what will happen is this is true. Okay, this is true. So it means optimal solution remains same. This is the answer of my second question. Firstly, okay, uh, my my two question is under what conditions the original optimal solution will be the optimal solution of the new formulated problem, and the second question is if it is not if the constraint if under what condition the optimal solution remains same and under what condition the optimal solution changes so here look at that the optimal solution remain the same because this constraint satisfies the optimality conditions look at this so there is no need to solve this further because the optimal solution remains same so the answer will be x1 is 20 by 19 x2 is this and this it means so if i just consider this so the optimal solution of this and this are same that's the because the, this constraint satisfied this uh, uh, objective solution, object optimal solution is there. 
look at the second objective second constraint so again when you substitute these two value in 8 so you will get x1 that is 20 by 19 plus 90 by 16 is it less than 6 so that is 110 divided by 19 sorry is 19 is less than equal to 6 that's also true because 90 when you divide this it is always be less than of the 6 so it means again it is true so it means the optimal solutions remain the same okay so here optimal solutions remain same look at this one thing when you add this value to here so it will get 20 by 19 plus 45 by 19 is less than 3 so that is 65 by 19 can't be less than of the 3 okay so it means optimal solution changes me okay so it means the optimal solution change so it means your task is to find those new optimal solution okay quickly look at the fourth case 2x1 plus x2 is greater than equal to 4. that is 2x1 that is nothing but 40 by 19 plus 45 by 19 is it greater than equal to 4 that is 85 by 19 is greater than equal to 4 that is again true because this is start with the 4 point something okay so this is again true so in in the in these four cases the optimal solution changes under this case only while others are true so it means our task is to find the optimal solution of this problem only okay. so if in the examination or in some uh, other other platform if the problem is solve this lpp discuss the impact of the optimal solution by adding only this one so then your answer will be since this satisfied this x1 and x2 so the optimal solutions remain the same that is the new answer of this lpp is x1 is this okay x2 is this and maximum of z is this that is remain same okay so we are talking about this case so what will happen is so consider the last optimal table p. remember this is the last optimal always remember whenever you are talking about this sensitivity analysis always consider the last optimal table or remember optimal table p. okay optimal table p. so i just consider the last this is the final optimal table if you look at carefully this is x2 x1 here is x1 x2 s1 s2 and this is a solution vector so i just consider this okay now you have to add these constraints so firstly always remember you have to apply the dual simplex method okay so firstly just write into the inequality so convert into the equality so you have to add the surplus variable is equal to 3 okay so now add them so here this is a constant so you have to add the new constant here so what is that this is x1 is there so you have to add s3 okay so here s3 is there so what is the value of this this is 1 this is 1 this is 0 this is 0 this is 1 right hand side is 3 and the value of the s1 s2 is 0 and look at that s3 is in the basic variable so the value of this is always be a 0 now look at that x2 is in the basic solution so it must be the i that is 1 0 0 but here is not be a 0 okay look at the x1 here is 0 1 it must be a 0 s3 0 0 that's 2 so your first task is to become this number and this number as a 0 so how to make it there are the two methods so i just consider both of them here so the first method is how you convert this becomes 0 so that is if I consider this as R3 this as R2 then how to becomes 0 R3 minus R2 simply okay so what is so what will happen is I just consider R2 minus this so the first line remains same okay, minus 3 by 19 0 45 by 19 1 0 minus 2 by 19 this now subtract them this is 0 this minus this this minus this is plus 2 by 19 minus 5 by 19 
1 minus 0 is 1, then this becomes 37 by 19. Okay. So look at that x2, but still here is not be there. This uh, this is remains same. 5 by 19, 6 by 19, 0, and this is my 235 by 19 p. Okay. So this is 235 by 19 p. So look at that. For the x1 is fine. S3 is fine, but for the x2, x2 is the first column of the basic matrix that is 1, 0, 0. So it must be a 0. So how you make them? This is your R3. So R3 minus of this value that is R1. So you have to apply the row operation here. So what is that? This is x2, this is x1, this is s3. So your new values are minus 3 by 19, 0, 45 by 19. This is 1, 0, minus 2, 5. Now R3 minus R1. So here is 0 minus 0, 0, this minus this. Okay, this minus this. So 1 minus 1, 0. This 2 minus 5 is this. This is minus of 2, 0, 1 minus 0. Here is minus 8 by 90. And this values remain the same. Okay, this is up to here. This is the first method. So it means you have to implement the two steps we first leave you because here <coughs> here x1 and x2 are the two but what will happen if there are the four rows and here x2 x1 s1 and so on are there so it means the number of the steps are increases okay so instead of finding these two steps okay this is the first method so there is a one simple method also be there that is the step that is the second method so i just consider here this is the second method. Okay, so this is our main optimal solution of the previous one. So I just add the column here that is S3 because when you convert this as a standard form, this is S3 is equal to 3. So the value is 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Here is my S3, 0, this is my 3. So now what we'll be do is because your target is firstly to convert this one as a zero, this one as a zero. Nothing is that. Firstly, you just write the previous two values because there is no change in it. Minus 3 by 19, 5 by 19, 0, 0, 45 by 19, 20 by 19. So look at the column. What is that? Here, the operations are this way. Okay. So calculate x and calculate these values from the this one that is x1 plus x2 plus s3 so look at that what is the value of the x1 is 1 in this first column b that is x1 here is 1 plus x2 here is 0 okay and there is no s3 so that is a value is 0 so it means you firstly calculate x1 plus x2 that is 0 plus 1 is 1 this 1 3 by 19, 2 by 19, 0, 65 by 19, and then subtract from this value. Okay, meaning is x1 plus x2, that is 1, that is this 1, subtract from here, that is 0. 1, subtract from here, 0. This 3 by 19, subtract from here, that is minus 3 by 19. x1 plus x2, 0. 2 by 19 subtract from here that is minus 2 by 19 add them 0 subtract from them 0 this is 65 by 19 minus subtract from here so that is 3 again it will comes minus 8 by 19 okay so for for more example if i say the constants are this say x1 2x1 minus x2 is say less than 0 for example okay they are less than equal to say uh, say 1 so what will be do is you have to calculate 2x1 minus x2 from here you calculate 2x1 minus x2 so what is that 2x1 minus x2 that is a 2 subtract from here 2x1 minus x2 that is 2x1 minus x2 that is minus 1 subtract from here and and then so on and look at that these values remain the same as that of the 
this last value. 5 by 90 minus 2 minus 3 minus 2 5 minus 3 and so on. Okay, and these values are remain same because there is no change in this table. 235 by 90. Okay, now right hand side is negative, so it means uh, it is infeasible, but the optimality is there. So it means you have to apply the dual simplex. Always remember whenever you are talking about the sensitivity analysis, always apply the dual simplex. So you have to find firstly the leaving variable and then find the entering variable. So take those negative values and find the minimum ratio among them. So what is that? This is the 5 by 3. This is 6 by 2. That is 8. This is 1.5. So this is my minimum one. Okay. So what is that? So this is my x2. This is my x1. This is my s1. Okay. So you have to complete this table easily. So how is that? x2 is the first column of the identity matrix. So that is 1, 0, 0. x1 is the second column this zj minus is always be a zero s1 third column this so you have to task about only these three columns are there so what is that this is the minus 3 by 19 so you have to divide this row by 3 minus 3 by 19 so it becomes 2 by 3 minus 3 by 19 divide and this is plus 8 by 3 and after that you can compute easily with these remaining values are there so look at that if you multiply this by 5 by 19 and add into this and subtract from this so you will get this number is my 38 by 57 and similarly for the others we minus 19 plus 19 okay this value is plus 5 by 3 this is plus 5 by 3 this is minus 2 by 3 this number is my 665 divided by 57 this number is my 95 by 57. This number is my 76 by 57. Okay. So now since ZJ minus CJ is greater than or equal to 0. So the optimal solutions are. What is the X1? New X1 is my 76 by 57. New X2 is my 95 by 57. And the new Z is my 665 divided by 57. So it means whenever you have to add these constraints to the original LPP, then the optimal solution changes and it changed from 235 divided by 19 to 665 by 57. And the value of the x1 and x2 are also changed. So let's consider one more example to clear, uh, to better clear this type. I just consider that now it's a three type, three variables. So consider the x1, x2, and x3. That is maximization of this subjective to this constraint speed. Okay. So when you solve this with the help of the simplex method, okay, or dual simplex method, or any other methods, you will get this optimal solution. So I again hope that you can easily solve this problem. So look at that. x1 is 0, x2 is 100, x3 is 220. Okay. For those students who are unable to compute this, so uh, you can see the solution in this here so these are the x1 x2 and so on this firstly this is the entering variable this is the minimum ratio and so on so you can easily calculate them so now my task is discuss the effect of adding these two new constants one by one that is adding first constant and then after that uh, what will the impact of adding the second constant to the given lpp now in this example i just consider both as a greater than sign b okay in the previous example i just considered both as the less than sign b so what will happen? Look at that. So I just consider the two examples one by one. So firstly, since the optimal solution is this way, okay, and the z is my 1350. So firstly, check with what will happen on this, whether the optimal solution remains same or not. So what is that? This is 0 plus 100 plus 230. Is it greater than or equal to 10? Yes, 2. Okay, because this is nothing but the 330 is always be greater than 10. So it means the optimal solution, it means optimal solutions remain same. Okay, it means when you add these constraints to the given LPP, okay, then the new optimal solution, then the optimal solution becomes same. X1 is 0, 100, 230 and Z values remain same. Look at the second case. 
so 0 this is minus of 200 this is minus of 230 is it greater than equal to 10 no so it does not hold okay so it means what is means that this means the optimal solution changes with so if it is change then you have to calculate the value of the change optimal solutions so how to calculate them okay so consider the last optimal table of the lpp so what is the last optimal table of the lpp is this minus 1 by 4 3 by 2 minus 17 by 4 and the variables are x2 x3 and x2 x3 and s3 so i just consider this one as this okay so this is the final optimal table now when you add this constant because this constant violates them always remember you have to apply the dual simplex for the easy calculation otherwise you have to add the minus s4 plus artificial variable is there so that means you have to add the two new variables so in order to avoid it i just use this value that is a less than sign to apply the dual simplex so when you apply this dual simplex multiply with the negative sign you will get this value and adding the slack variable so this is the s4 okay so what is that you have to add this new variable s4 okay so this is the call row corresponding to the s4 that is minus 1 okay plus 2 corresponding to x2 s3 that is plus 1 while all others are zeros 0 and the right hand side is minus 10 now since this is x2 so the column corresponding to x2 is 1000 0, 0, 0. it must be there but here is not 0 so your task is to become 0 x3 0 1 0 0 again your task is to become 0 s3 0 0 0 that's no problem because it is already a 0 s4 0 0 0 0 okay. so your again two methods are there firstly you how you can if it is r4 you firstly you firstly apply r4 minus of two times r1 you formulate the new problem new table and after that your task two comes here then r4 minus of r two okay but instead of that you can easily solve it with the help of the second method is there that's quite easy so what is the operation is there you have to apply this operation okay that is minus x1 plus 2x2 plus x3 plus x3 okay now look at that apply these up so x1 is not be there so there is no worry about that calculate these values so minus x1 x1 is 0 so there is no need of this x1 2x2 plus x3 so 2x2 plus x3 so i just calculate the first value how this value becomes minus of 2 2x2 that is minus half plus x3 3 by 2 okay so this becomes 1 and then whatever the value you have to compute it by this subtract from here so you get the 1 so 1 that is minus 1 that is minus 2 similarly for here what is that 2x2 plus x3 2x2 plus x3 is nothing but that 2 you have to subtract from here that is a 0 similarly for this 0 1 0 so you have to 2x2 plus x3 that is 1 1 minus 1 0 2x2 plus x because there is no role of the s3 in this constant so that's why i'm not talking about this third row if it is there present s3 here then you can have to taken these values okay or simply you have to calculate this column that is minus x1 plus 2x2 plus x3 so since there is no x1 present here so there is no role of the x1 okay so what is that 2x2 plus x3 that is 1 plus 0 1 so when you subtract from this okay so 1 that is 0 minus 1 is there again from here you get 0 this 0 and similarly for here what is that 2x2 plus x3 is this is a 200 then this is the 220 200 and 220 that is just 2x2 plus x so 200 plus that is a 430 430 oh sorry this is not be a minus 10 this is not be a minus 10 so this is my 200 plus 230 okay and then what is that this is 430 you have to subtract from this one there, that is minus of 10 so it will becomes minus 440 now so now if this is not be the optimal table this is the optimal table but this is not the feasible one so you have to leave this one okay and what will happen is 
you have to find the uh, uh, entering variable so that is minus 1 and the minus 4 are there so the minimum is this way okay so what will happen is this is my x2 this is my x3 this is my s3 and now this is my s1 okay so what is that this is x2 this is 1 0 0 0 x3 0 1 0 0 s3 s3 is my here 0 0 1 0 and s1 0 0 0 1 always be and this is my zj minus cj okay this is always be 0 for the basic variables okay. so what is that you have to divide this number by the 1 or oh, sorry minus 1 so it becomes 2 0 0 minus 1 this is 4 14 okay and based on that you have to calculate the other values i just calculate this right hand side is here how to calculate multiply with the half and then subtract from this way. okay multiply with the half and subtract from this then you will get this respective values okay and if it is optimal then it's true otherwise move on the other part so after that you will get the optimal solutions uh, in this step you will get the optimal solution and then that will be your final optimal answer so uh, if this table is not optimal then again apply the dual simplex or until unless you will get the optimal solution Okay, so the very few practice problems are there. So consider the maximization problem. This again, this is a three variable problem. And in, uh, investigate the effect of the optimal solutions by adding these constraints into this LPP. Okay, so when you try to solve this LPP by the simplex method, you will get this optimal solution firstly. Okay, that is x1 is 0, x2 is 0, x3 is 20. You will get the value of z is 10. So whether the effect whether there is any effect of adding this constraints to this LPP. So how you check that? You have to apply this x1, x2, x3 into it and check whether the constraints violate or not. So look at that. This is a 0. Okay. This is again a 0. This is a 60. So 60 can't be less than of the 50. So it means the optimal solutions changes not be that means same so you have to add the variable s4 and then add this one look at the second table second example so consider the maximization problem this and the optimal table is given here okay so here remember this are the slack where instead of using s1 s2 s3 here is x4 x5 x6 are the slack variable discuss the impact of adding the optimal solutions by adding the new constraint okay so this is the new constraints so firstly what is the optimal solution here what is the x1 optimal solution 0 x2 is my x2 is here x2 is my 24 x3 is my 21 and x4 x5 x6 are the slack variable so there is no role of it so when you substitute here x1 is 0 so it becomes 0 minus x2 that is minus 24 plus 2 x3 that is a 42 okay so it is not be less than 12 so it means the optimal solution again changes so once you again enter the slack variable into it okay so then after solving it you will get these two solutions that is alternate solution exists so i think all of you know what is the condition of the alternate solution that is when zj minus cj is zero for at least one variable for the non-basic these are the basic variable that zj minus cj is always be a zero okay so if i say if suppose this is becomes zero so it means there is an extra zero in the zj minus cj corresponding to x1 but x1 is not in the basic variable so it means there is existing of the alternate solutions then you can enter this leaving this then you will get this optimal solutions okay last example so solve this problem by graphically because there are the two variables x1 and x2 are there solve this problem graphically you can easily solve it okay and discuss the impact and when you try to solve this problem graphically you will get this optimal solution b x1 10 x2 40 and z is 360 so discuss the impact of the optimal solutions when the following changes are introduced in the problem one at a time not all at the same time first one objective function changes by 8 x1 plus 4 x2 okay so optimal function that is this value changes so 
whether the optimal solutions this remains same definitely not be there so what will happen this is nothing but my type 1 okay so for more detail about the type 1 sensitivity analysis you can see the video link in the description so that is you have to change the optimal table here otherwise say for example graphical table is this and say this is the feasible solution these are my corner points okay and you have to relook uh, recalculate the values of the z for this objective functions at these corner points one that is a b c d and then find the optimal solution and then you will get these optimal values otherwise if you try to solve this by using the simplex method okay so your simplex method will be look like uh, what is that once you cal cal calculate the objective value okay this is x1 this is x2 and then so on so what is that you have to consider the new objective function what is that this is 8x1 plus 4x2b okay. 8x1 plus 4x2b so this is my 8 this is my 4 here whatever is there x1 x2 or x2 x1 okay so 8 for then calculate this zj minus cv again that is multiply this this is the optim final optimal table B. okay and calculate these values if all are positive then the optimal solution remains same otherwise if not then you can enter them leaving them and find their values B. okay second type second part right hand side of the second constraints changes by change to the 80 that is right hand side of the second constraint this value it means it replaced to the 80 that is this is my type 2 okay Again, that uh, link of their video disc is given in the description. You can see that. I just recall that how, how to solve this uh, right hand side is. I think all of you remember that you have to need to calculate B inverse. Okay. So, and when you change the right hand side is 20. So, the new vector is 20, 80, 0, 0. Okay. So, that is the new vector is 20, 80, 0, 0. Okay, so multiply this B inverse with this value 20, 80, 0, 0 and calculate it B. If all are positive, then optimal solution remains same. If at least one of them is less than 0, then optimal disturbs, feasibility disturbs because it's a negative. So apply the dual simplex method and then find their optimal solution. So when you try to solve it graphically, so instead of the simplex method, so how to do this second part is just remove the constraints in the graphically corresponding to this and redraw it with the help of 2x1 plus x2 is less than or equal to 80. Okay, means here if say these are the uh, four constraints and say for example this constraint is corresponding to this one b. Okay, and now the new problem is you have to replace this by 80. So what will you do is you have to delete this constraint. Okay, and then redraw it with the help of this. Now this becomes 80 and then try to find the uh, corner points again and solve it. And after solving you will get this optimal solutions. Third part is a new constraint is introduced. Okay, so it means the new constraint is introduced that is my type 4. So look at that whether the optimal solution changes or not. Firstly, check x1 is 10. That is the remember this is the optimal original optimal solution. This is not the original optimal solution. So that is a 20 plus x2 is my 40 is 10. So it means this is hold. This is 2. So it means the optimal solution remain the same. So it means there is no change in the optimal solution. So it means the answer of this third problem is remain the same. So this is the way how to solve it uh, graphically or simplex method and do the sensitivity analysis. So I hope students you can uh, able to understand the way of the sensitivity analysis. So I hope you may enjoy it. And then if there is any doubt again you are most welcome to uh, write an email to me or send a comment here, I will most happy to solve your problems. Thank you and best of luck.